Hello, friends. Klaus Richter here with a special message about the Authors and Dragons convention happening this September 21st and 22nd at Bally's Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, I don't seem to recall exactly what that message was. Ron Weasley Jeremy, do you remember what the fuck I was talking about? What? Tickets? Tickets now available? More information available at facebook.com forward slash authors and dragons or authors and dragons.com. What the hell are you talking about, Ron Weasley Jeremy? Those aren't even real words. You're drunk. I'm drinking the rest of your beer. Sorry about that, friends. Oh, yes. Now I remember what I was going to say. What happens in Vegas stays on your genital area until such time when you visit a high level cleric. That shit's expensive, so mind where you put your weasel. Ron Weasel Jeremy, did you piss in this beer? Authors and Dragons! Time of magic, age of might. A band of heroes step up to the fight. Playing with powers they don't understand. Will they fuck it all up or will they save the land? Treachery! Authors take on a sadistic games master. Will they survive? Let's find out, bitches. Authors and dragons! Authors and dragons! Hey there, I'm John Hartness, and I'll be playing the role of Fendingo the Fantastical! Bard of All Trades, and recently very stoned, Magic Initiate. Uh, in real life, I write a bunch of different things, including Quincy Harker Demon Hunter, The Black Knight Chronicles, and Bubba the Monster Hunter. And a lot of those have new releases this spring, so look my shit up. Buy it. You'll love it. I promise. Really, I do. Hi, I'm Joseph Brassi. Uh, I was an author on the Mongoliad Project. My novel Skyfair and Dragon Road are out from Angry Robot Books. And uh, I play the role of Bjorg Bjornsson, enthusiastic and violent barbarian. And I am working on a new shingle story titled tentatively Necbromancers. Hi, my name is Rick Gualteri and I play Silas Kane, overly fanatical paladin of Tor. Rhymes with egg, but I can't say it. Anyway... I, in real life, I write uh, several uh, several series, including the Tome of Bill. And uh, by the time you read this or listen to this, a new book, Second String Savior, from uh, from the Tome of Bill universe, should be available. Hello, friends. My name is Robert Bevan. I play the role of Klaus Richter, the notorious rogue. In real life, I write the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories, starting with the first book, Critical Failures. Hey there, everyone. I am Drew Hayes, the GM of this traveling shit circus. In real life, I write books such as Superpowers, NPCs, Fred the Vampire Account, and just announced today as of this recording, a new Audible series, although it will be coming to print an ebook later, Five Minute Sherlock, with the first one, The Case of the Damaged Detective. So, uh, yeah, pick that up on June 13th. That's going to be a fun one. But... When last we left our intrepid adventurers, they were sailing the high seas. Eh, get it? Get it? Yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, fucking hilarious. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <sighs> yep. Worked all week on that joke, so I really wanted to stretch it there. Uh, so, you're on so, vacation, huh? I got it. I know, yeah. So, they uh, they were sailing the seas. There, there was... You know, merry adventures and singing and drinking, but that's all boring to RP. So we will pick up <laughs> uh, after you have all been dropped off unceremoniously at Landport, which, if you have forgotten, is the place where you hung out for a while with the magic axe. There was Gunther and Bunther and the wizard dad and all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, you're back. It's morning. <sighs> Uh, so Bjorg still, I, I think, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toast up here. I don't think Bjorg has been wearing Brandegg on his back the entire time they've been on the boat. Um, though, I don't know, is Silas looking like he might try to take it if I leave it? Of course. 
Okay, then Bjorg is wearing brand egg on his back continuously. Good, 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 time. good, because otherwise, otherwise we're firing your asses, Nanny. <sighs> Bjorg is just kind of like glaring at Silas, because at this point, like... Okay, so Brandon is a questionable parent, but but Silas just should not children at all. <laughs> should not children. He just no. This is not this is not okay. You know, Bjorg comes from a very communal culture, like most children are very communally raised. Um and no, this is not okay. Silas should barely adult, much less children. Well, Silas will whisper to Toreg. Don't 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 listen to the barbarian. No, they're not known. They're not known for being bright. Just the second every the, every time Silas starts whispering to Brandeg, like Bjorg will just go no, 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 and then he will shift position to move the egg away from Silas. <laughs> you gotta sleep sometime. Fandango is not taking sides in this custody battle. You guys can Kramer versus Kramer versus a McMuffin somewhere else. Um, I got no. magical shit to sell to Gunther's dad to buy more drugs. <laughs> Look, we used the last of my hallucinogenic smoke, so... How will you level up in the future without more? <laughs> right? So, yeah. I want to go see um, Gunther's dad. I also found this rainbow wand thing that I don't know what the fuck it is, so... I figure he's a magic dude. Yes, uh, magic, magic dude. Uh, what was the treasure we found again? Remind me. I don't think we found much treasure. Well, I have a tiny object that looks like a feather that I don't know what it is. I have a shitload of research, uh, research notes. I have a rainbow wandy thing. Um, I have a skull with some shit engraved on it. And I have, uh... And we have all of the slod human DNA recombinant abolith research. And we have a lot of gentronome bucks still. Aren't gentronome <laughs> bucks functionally worthless? I mean, they're basically fascist gnome dollars. Gunther smokes a lot of smoke. He might go for it. I've run stupider cons in my life. Well, Bjorg's, uh, uh, you know, sollies up the big old egg on his back, just kind of looking at him, just and like... Why am I responsible for this? <laughs> well, because nobody else will help. <laughs> um, Not a chance. And I'm... because Silas cannot be trusted with children. Or babies. Or pre-babies. Brandon and I are more, are more like, you know, we're more hands-off parents. I've noticed. Look, you should be honored. You're Toreg's governess. Hey, Bjorg. Yes? Let's go see Gunther's dad and maybe he could tell us what kind of egg that is, and if it's going to hatch something that will fucking eat us. Yes, this is a good idea. I think we should learn Brand Egg's identity. Hey, do I recall there being, like, rumors of things on this island that we didn't bother to go hunt? Or is that a different island or my imagination? Uh, feels like your imagination. I mean, there was definitely more island to explore, but... Biggest rumors and stuff were all about the shit you guys were fucking with. Okay, then. And I think we don't want to ever fuck with that axe again. Now I wasn't thinking about the axe. I, uh, I don't know. This might be my imagination or my. Imagination. There's also the I, there's the island with Marvin, the depressed ass robot. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Okay. Because <clears throat> we have a note to take back to him, where his dad says, "Nah, you fucking suck, bro." So wait, did Gunther's dad make? The depressed robot? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Now I know that. Are we going to the wizard or not? Uh, yeah, it's up to you guys collectively. <laughs> I will also go to the wizard. Don't forget to carry Toreg. I, I don't have anything to sell to the wizard. I think uh, I will go hang out at the tavern with Ron Weasley Jeremy and, uh, yeah, get, get the feel of the place. Uh, the everybody vibe. roll me perceptions. Okay. All right, first failure of the night. <laughs> Silas rolls a 12. Bendigo rolls a 21. Bjorg rolls a 14 for perception. Klaus rolls a 5. <laughs> all right. As you are all going into the tavern, you notice that uh, Brandon has discovered a particularly well-lit patch of seawater in which he can see his reflection, so he's he's a lost cause for the foreseeable future. Uh, 
<laughs> as as you all have learned traveling with Brandon Thymaster. Well, he's he's down for at least four hours. Yeah. So uh, as you all walk into the tavern slash inn, whether you stay or walk through, uh, you all get the same perception check. Everybody but Klaus notices uh, some form of many of the people going, oh, fuck, they're back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Look. everybody. We're back. Uh, Don't worry. We're not going to let Silas stay long. You're welcome. Don't worry, non-believers. Soon there'll be m- more of me, you know, as I introduce you to my my son. No, this is not your son. Uh, Fandingo, with a 21, uh, you notice some of the patrons covertly passing out wads of cotton. <laughs> this island is full of really smart people. <laughs> um, Let's see if we can right. change that. Uh, anybody who wants to continue <laughs> forward to the Wizard Tower may. Um, anyone who wants to stay and order a drink may. Move your characters appropriately. But uh, do note that you have to pass through Gunther's shop in order to uh, get to the tower. Right. And that is uh, that is something that you have to interact with. It's not an automatic pass through. Bjorg is just uh, following Fandango since Fandango said he wanted to see the wizard. The wonderful wizard of Landport. <laughs> Can we? Is the general goods just a pass through? Can we just kind of? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we just have you, to go in to see Gunther. Yeah, they're all fairly pass through, except for the path to the Wizard Tower for obvious reasons. Come on, Bjorg. I've already moved your egg. Bjorg will follow. We'll follow Fendigo. It's a, it's such a shame that uh, that your other parents abandoned you to a egg, but don't worry, I'm still here. No, no, he's not. Don't listen to him. <laughs> You guys walk in, there's uh, some wisps of smoke, and you hear uh, a hurried... <coughs> oh, oh, God. <clears throat> no, I'm not eating anything. It's fine. <clears throat> uh, are you a cop? No, nah, it's fine, bro. It's us. Oh, shit, man. Uh, you hallucinations look a lot like some people I used to sell drugs to. That's <laughs> because we hallucinations are the people you used to sell drugs to. Oh, fuck, you were hallucinations all along? What a twist, man. Well, we thought we were hallucinations, then we took the drugs and realized that we were real people hallucinating that we were hallucinations. Fuck. Fuck. I'll see if I can get you back to being pure energy, man, because that is, like, the optimal form. I got some magical shit to sell. Do I do that with you or your dad? Uh, well, that sort of depends. Is it the sort of thing that can be easily classified and sold? Or is it the more nebulous, general adventuring discovery stuff? Because, you know, different answers. I plop the rainbow wandy thing on the, on the counter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this I can do. Cool, what is it? Uh, it's going to be 50 gold assessment fee, man. All right. I'll pay that. All right. Uh, you pay him 50 gold. Uh, he basically pulls out a mat, unrolls it, and then just uh, lays the item on top of it. Uh, and in a book that he's holding, he starts to read off. <laughs> oh, shit, man. This is, a, this is a wand of wonder. Where the fuck did you get one of these things? <laughs> these are crazy. Like, uh, when you cast one just like all kinds of crazy shit happens like it sometimes it's wind sometimes you cast like a fart sometimes it rains it's fucking uh yeah Wait, it, it can make farts Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. can you can you create a rain of farts i don't know man it, that's that's the whole thing that's what a wand of wand of wonder is they are uh huh. interesting pretty pretty fascinating if you're interested in parting with it, uh, looks like I can pay up to uh, twenty five hundred if it is fully charged, and yours is. Mm, man, that's a pretty good amount of money, but the the potential for fuckery with a fart wand is pretty awesome. Do you have anything else to sell? You know what's like that? I do. But it's probably going to cost me 50 gold to find out what it is. Bjorg uh, picks up um, the egg and looks at Gunther and goes, What is this other than an egg? Um, huh. He's like, he moves the wand aside and gestures for you to put the egg on the mat. Do you do it? 
Okay. All right. Uh, you set the egg onto the mat. Uh, he reads the information, kind of digs around, pulls out a pair of goggles with a bunch of glowing runes on them, sets them against his face and looks it up and down, and then goes, ha, ha, ha. No fucking idea. See, this is the kind of thing that I can't identify. Uh, it's not, you know, standard magical fare. For this, you still need a, a real expert. This kind of thing has to go through pop. Mm, all right. Very well. Uh, should we expect him to charge us significantly for that? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, it all sort, right, sort of right. depends. He's he's a very big uh, trade trade guy. Nothing comes free, especially not information. So... If you were willing to give him the egg, he might tell you what was in it. I, That's sort of, you know, not many people are always into that move. Tor, tor egg is no, not up for adoption. Two, yeah. No, two of my friends here have decided that this egg is their child, and I'm somewhat concerned both about the prospect of either of them trying to be a parent, and, uh, frankly, with the idea that they might unintentionally be parenting something that will devour them. Yeah, reasonable concern. Yeah, in that case, it's going to cost you, man. Maybe information, maybe gold. You know, he's, he's pretty amiable to all forms, but nothing's free. Trust me. As his son, I tell you, nothing. <laughs> oh, shit, he charges you. Probably charges him double. No, I work in this magic shop because it's clearly my passion. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Maybe you just really enjoy building things. <laughs> oh, I enjoy making things, bro. I enjoy making things quite a bit. I thought it just gave you access to the good components, but sure, man. Oh, no. Trust me, once Gunther's special homebrew gets off the grounds, I'm going to have my own chain of these things. But, but yeah, for bro. now, still got to save up. <laughs> so, what else can I identify for you? I pull out a tiny object that looks like a feather, and I place it on the mat. Okay. Uh, that will also, of course, be 50 gold. Done and done. All righty. Let's see. This is... Oh, wow. I haven't seen one of these in forever. Qual's Feather Token. Uh, yeah, these are one-offs, man. You, uh, you can use it, and it'll have, again, kind of a random effect. Uh, sometimes you can, like, touch it to a boat, and that vessel can't be moved by any means. Uh, you could be on a boat, and you could, like, use it and toss it up ten feet, and it would vanish, and a big fan would appear. Uh, but, you know, all all sort of random. There's a special inscription that tells you which one it does. Hang on. Hang on. I have to drill in. And, John, I'm going to need you to roll me a D100. This is the first time you've actually found this out, so we need to set it. Yeah. 82. With an 82? Oh, okay. This is the one... You have to be outside to use. Now, that is super important. Uh, you can touch it down in a space that's like generally unoccupied. Uh, it vanishes, but in its place, a non-magical oak springs into existence. It's like a huge-ass tree. It's like 60 feet tall, like a fucking five-foot-around trunk, and like huge-ass 20-foot branches, man. It's wild. Uh, so, yeah, it makes a tree. Interesting. No, kind of. It's like it's like trying to plant something in not soil doesn't work. Same thing. What if I'm in a cave? That's soil. I mean, yeah, but then you're just gonna have the tree that like hits and smashes and maybe grinds yeah. you into paste, depending maybe. on how it goes. What if it's inside and it's in a pot of soil? Yeah, nope. That doesn't, probably won't work. You can't really trick magic. It's magic. I don't know, man. We've done some really weird shit to gods. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. You do. It's your thing. You do what you want with it. Just remember, one use. Oh, uh, if you want to sell it, the old man will pay 500 gold. Uh, only so many uses for these. Seems fair. I pull out a skull that's got a bunch of random shit engraved in it, and I put it on the map. Uh, his his whole like thing starts just kind of blinking. Uh, yeah, that is not a standard item. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so, that's all, oh, and I'll grab that lavender gem out of my bag and put that oh. down there. Alright, uh, that'll be 50 gold, and, uh, yeah, this is a gem. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is it worth more than 50 gold? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, let's be fair. Roll a D200. 109. It's worth 109 gold. All right, I'll trade this gem for 109 gold. Okay. Does anybody else have uh, things they want to pay Gunther to examine? Uh, no. Quote, unquote. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've only got one vial of smoke left. How much is a, another vial of that badass purple smoke, bro? Oh, the purple? Oh, man, no. That was last season's batch, man. No, no, oh. no. What's uh, what's this season's batch, bro? He, he waves you in and then waves you closer and then waves you even closer and then whispers, Cerulean. How much? He kind of looks, how high do you want to get? I've got some purity <laughs> grades. We've got the 200 gold batch, the 500 gold batch, and the 1,000 gold batch. I have this feather that'll make a big fucking tree. And I have said that you can get 500 gold for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take a big fucking tree feather batch. All right, so you want... Do you want multiple of the twos or one of the fives? Oh, one of the fives. All right, he hands you a glowing cerulean smoke vial. <laughs> All right, are we... So is your dad home? Can we go take some of this shit to him and see if he'll make us an offer? He kind of raises an eye. Uh, if you're not willing to part with the egg and the skull, I, I don't know the value. Well, uh, how, do I, how do I put this delicately? We're probably willing to part with the skull, but we want to know what it is. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not that powerful, so I can't say for sure how interested he'll be. And we've got all of these research notes from a secret underground magical research facility. Okay, that... That will be up his alley. Hang on a second. Yeah. Gunther kind of like shuffle, shuffles into the back. Um, you hear him piddling around, clanging. There's a the glow of a crystal ball, and you hear some muffled. I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just, uh, and then all of a sudden, you are no longer in Gunther's shop. You are standing in the. Um, lounge of the big head wizard guy. All of us are oh. just Fendigo. All of you. Oh. Everyone who was in that shop with him is now in the wizard area. Goodness. Uh, hi. Uh, the wizard is sitting there just eating uh, a plate of eggs that are floating. What is this about research? So... You see these lovely tiaras that me and my friends are wearing? Can I cox an eyebrow? Fascinating. Yeah. So we just came from a place where people were try were gnomes were trying to merge aboliths and slods. <laughs> His eyes go up. Interesting. We also killed an abolith. With a slot? With a slot. We used a slot to kill an abolith. Not gonna lie, it's pretty metal. I killed the abolith. Did we really have to teleport everyone? Uh, perhaps you should all start from the beginning. And for the sake of our listeners and the game itself, we will just assume you all basically bumble through the effective story. Like yes. we bumbled through the act actual story, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as it as it wraps up, if you want to jump in and, and put a cap on it. So we ended up with this pile of alchemical shit, this leather-bound journal, a bunch of research notes, this skull with some weird shit engraved on it, all of this slod human recombinant D abolith recombinant DNA shit, and this egg. Hmm. Much egg. Tor egg. Lot Not egg. tor egg. And these bastards won't let me scramble it, so... What is it? Besides Tor Egg. It's not Tor Egg. It's an egg. Hmm. Gentlemen, I believe you and I are going to have to have a modicum of trust between us. In order to assess the value of this research, I will need to peruse that research. Now, I understand that that might leave you hesitant... Uh, out of fear that I will simply take what I need and leave you holding the bag. So, I will offer at least a bargain. Allow me to peruse the research and I will tell you 
what I can gather about that egg. Even if we do not do business, that is the price of me looking. Sold. Done. Sold. Very well. Help yourselves to a breakfast as I look through, and I'm assuming Fandango pulls out all the shit from the bag of holding. Fuck yeah. And F- as Fandango's you- just so happy that he's getting anything out of this because he knows that Home Slice could have just taken all of the shit. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Well, he's he's a dick, but he's not an evil character. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. We have something, so, yeah. we, we, have something yeah. we can use. Uh, so he is going to motion, and then just a big spread of food uh, appears before you guys. Oh. Uh, fresh, like, meats and breads. And it, it's, especially after Gentronome and the ship, it looks fucking amazing. Oh, Papa's getting himself some northern bacon. It looks amazing to, like, you know, to them. This, this shit for Silas is, like, overindulgent. But they also have your favorite, nothing. <laughs> Sit down, Silas, and have some fucking poutine. <laughs> I'm okay with overindulgent. I'm, that's kind of right in my wheelhouse. Well, as yes. the party goes ham on some ham, we jump back to the inn, where Klaus is, I'm assuming, ordering a drink? Uh, you are assuming correctly. I would like to order a drink for myself and Ron Weasley Jeremy and... Enough to refill my various wine skins. Uh, it's a silver per drink, and let's just say a silver per wine skin of ale. So, however many skins you're refilling, deduct an appropriate amount of silver. Yeah, I'm just gonna deduct a gold and. Uh... Feels appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> keep keep the game rolling. Is there anything you'd like to do besides have a drink? Any conversation, or are you just... Well, I was going to converse, because I, I, I don't know. I had it in my mind that there was some other shit on this island, but yeah, I might have been drunk. So I would uh, I do see a general goods store over there. So, it, it, you know, is it, this place is okay for me to drink on the walk, correct? Um, only in your own cup, it you are not trusted. <laughs> so if you want to finish your drink and then just chug out of your wine skin, that's fine. Uh, uh, they're gonna uh, they're gonna make you leave the mugs there. They don't. You've been to this town. <laughs> you don't have the benefit of the doubt. I, I don't. I don't <laughs> have their mugs. I, uh, you can check my inventory. We saved this fucking town, <laughs> fuckers. <laughs> All right. It's it's less that they think you're going to steal them and more that they just think if you leave with that mug, it's never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's probably fair. It's general shit showery. All right. All right, Ron Weasley, Jeremy, drink up. Um, <laughs> we will have our drinks and uh, and take our wineskins to go. There you go. And uh, I would like to go to the general goods store and inquire about... A replacement um, crossbow with a reel or whatever I was using. Oh, the special grappling hook thing? Yes. Yeah. He's like, yeah, man, we definitely don't have that. Bummer. <laughs> that's that's yeah. super custom. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I get that. Um, well. Would you uh, like to place an order for something like that? We do have uh, craftsmen who work here. We could in theory, put something together. How long might that take, in theory? Um, well, if you want it done... Uh, let's see. For 10 gold, if you swing by here in a month, there is a fairly good chance that they will have something for you. Uh, if you want to throw 100 gold in and you know move up the queue a little bit, you could check back in a week, and they may have... Uh, figured it out, but they're going to have to design and build this from scratch. So there's going to be a waiting period, no matter what. All right. Um, I will take the month option and assume, or try to make it happen that we hang around here a month, or would we'll come back. We're not particularly on a time limit. I'll put the ten gold down now, and you know, get this done when you can, and I'll either pick it up in a month or a year, whenever, or whenever. Just can you can you hold it for me? All right, then you are going to be spending uh, probably the rest of this time giving them specs and, like, explaining how your old one worked and um, just, you know, basically trying to tell them what you want because this is being built for you. No, 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 you you should let him do that real time because I want to see what the fuck gets built here. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no, for the same reason we (laughs) sped through recounting the adventure. (laughs) We like our listeners. 
All right, I have taken 10 gold out of my inventory. All right, and you begin to describe to them your old grappling hook that you would like replaced. Uh, All right, we're going to cut back to breakfast as you guys are winding down, and uh, the wizard has kind of sorted through all the information. Um, He's looked at the book. Um, He's given that like a quick skim. He's looked at all the research, the... uh, the corpse, you guys destroyed the corpse, right? Yeah. Of the adult? Yeah. Yeah, of the of the ill of the human of the mind yes. of the artificial mind flayer. Yes. yes, I believe we did, yes. Okay. Um so he ha- has finished kind of going through da, 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 and he kinda settles down. Very well. I have reached a certain amount of understanding of what you possess. But first I have a debt to pay. The egg. It is uh, unknown to me what is inside. I cannot tell you because it is absolutely an artificially created being. Err? Uh, yes, based on what I have been looking through, the attempts to uh, integrate different physical attributes from different species culminating in what appears to be the theoretical creation of a mind flare. Uh, yes, the, these people were absolutely into uh, engineering of the genetical variety. Highly advanced theoretical sciences, I want for you. Uh, but it is interesting, and I am a bit curious. Um, however, I do have some good news. This book, and he holds up the leather-bound journal, is a appears to be an instruction manual for the hatching and care of the creature. So you're, so you're saying so you're saying Toreg is special? Uh, yes. Now bear in mind, this entire book will, of course, be theoretical because, as I've stated, there's a good chance that whatever's in that egg has never existed before, and what it is or what natures it might have, even I cannot begin to guess. But if, there's a potential that we could be hatching a magical mystery mind flare. There's a potential you could be hatching anything. The sciences and magics that these people were dealing with are beyond even my understandings of the artificial flesh. This truly was, in its own horrible way, the work of a genius. Yeah. Cobbly Wobbly was a smart motherfucker, except for the fact that he was insane. And now it's mine. The fuck you say. He kind of leaps back through. That's not the name of the person who did this. That sounds like the name of the gnome hero who died stopping all of this. (laughs) You fuck. (laughs) Oh, oops. What is the name of the one who did all this? Doesn't say. Uh, Shockingly, in this book of incredibly illegal and horrid magic, he did not elect to sign his name. (laughs) Some people have no pride in their work. Mm, Indeed. Now then, with that... Attended to. There, there, Toreg. You're not an illegal. Let us move on to your more fascinating discovery, this research itself. I would like to acquire it from you. Well, I would like to not have that much paper lying around for Bjork to smoke. So I bet we can come to an arrangement. You know, I'm probably not going to smoke that research. I'll tell you what, if you can make it so I can say my God's name again... It's all yours. No, no, no. We are not spending our gift on that. So, what are you... Are you thinking you want to trade some items? Or are you thinking you want to give us cash? Or what What, what you got in mind? Yorgle at the bar. My child, I am not a vendor. That is what Gunther is for. I do not deal in baubles. Do not ask me to make you offers. Stop, sit amongst yourselves, and decide what you truly need. Perhaps something you could only get from a man of my esteemed caliber, or at least an item of high enough quality that would be unmatched. I would urge you to consider this carefully. This is a rare opportunity. It is not often there are things I genuinely want. Do you need this decision made quickly, or do we have any time to consider? Take all the time you like, so long as it is before sundown. And he snaps, and you're back in Gunther's. God damn it. 
uh, it is it is morning. Yeah, it's morning. You guys have plenty of time. You know, there you guys are kind of at the point where you're about to start a new leg of your quest. There are a lot of different directions you could go with it. So uh, you know, you've you've got time to mull over the option that this has brought you. Mm. Well, uh, what do we need? We need well, a boat. Okay, actually, give me intelligence checks because there is a very <laughs> clear one that you would all pretty pick up on pretty quickly. All right, let me see here. <laughs> Fendingo, that one's it. Silas gets an eleven. Here, Bjorg rolls a seven. Fuck. Well, actually, Bjorg and Silas both get it. It was a very low DC. This literally was informed minutes ago in your characters' lives. Um, you all just got dropped off and kicked off the ship, so unless you plan to live on this island, you've got to figure out some method of transport. <laughs> be it uh, purchasing, sure. be it, you know, Ooh. purchasing travel, be it getting a ship yourselves. Like, unless you plan Could to we... stay here, that's that's a very obvious concern, seeing as you just left your ship. I was thinking Brandon wanted a boat. Could we get... Yes, we could get a boat. A boat big enough to hold all of us. A boat that could break through ice and take us to the frozen north. A boat that could carry us on adventure! I was thinking a boat with a separate boat way behind it for Silas. Uh, That's also possible. Ooh, my very own tour boat. Uh... Well, did Homeboy identify the skull, though? Damn it. Uh, yeah, it minor bobble. Wasn't really worth RPing. Um, it, it, it's, it was basically a focusing element. It's neat. It, he kind of just considers it part of the research. Oh, all right. It wasn't, it wasn't special okay. in its own right. Cool. What are we going to do with this f- fucking baby mind flayer egg? Hey, Drew, if you wanted to take me, uh, if you wanted to give me a turn, I was going to go to Gunther's next anyway. All right. Uh, the meeting, the breakfast took longer than we thought. You finish up at just the right time. Uh, you walk in on them discussing a boat. So an Aboleth Mind Flayer Gnome hybrid is going to hatch out of Brandeg and Gunther's dad will give us a boat. Uh, neat. I just lost my icon. You're under Brandeg. Sure. Oh, there I am. <laughs> you have egg on your face. Get away from Toreg. <laughs> I don't even get a crone for the egg on your face line? God damn. Uh, it went to the live blog. <laughs> Tough room. It went to the live blog. All right, that's good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where we are. Um, did he give us back the leather-bound journal? Yeah, you guys still have all your stuff. You haven't made an exchange yet. Can I take a little while and kind of read over what it takes to hatch this fucking egg? Sure. Uh, you crack it open and remember it's still it's coded gnomish. gibberish. Oh, damn it! Uh, he told you what it was. He didn't tell you how to read it. All right. So if we want to keep this and hatch brand egg, we're going to need a boat and a translation. Yes. And I don't know how willing he is we'll to hatch eventually. Well, hmm. There might be a way to hatch it and not have it want to kill us. In case you're interested in the whole not dying thing. Uh, I am interested. Nah, I'm more interested in talking to Gunther. Oh, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, uh, I got this ring of stink-like ass, and uh, <laughs> I would like to get it off of me without losing a finger. Uh, maybe. Like, lay it down on the mat? Oh, 50 bucks. Or 50, 50 gold. <laughs> All right, well, I will lay my hand down on the mat, because if I could lay just the ring down, then I... Would smell better. Wouldn't need this yep. shit. All right. Uh, All right, he uh, he looks at it. Oh, snap. Yeah, this is a ring of misfortune. Every day, just kind of a different random thing. I forgot to make you roll for it today, so fuck it, oh. you still smell bad. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, a, this is a real bummer, man. This is a tough one. Uh, da, 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 looks like ah ah lucky you. We do have the incantation to take it off. Uh, it's gonna be two hundred gold though. Fuck. 
Yeah, that's that's the risk of putting on random shit you find. Sometimes it's cursed. All right, paying the two hundred. Because <clears throat> all I, right, I want my own stink to be my only stink. Uh, he takes your two hundred, uh, pulls out a small silver tool, taps it, uh, and just pulls the ring off easily. Mm. Hey Gunther, you want to buy a ring of misfortune? Hold on, do I still get to keep the ring? Yeah, it's your ring. All right. All right, I also have this amulet. Uh, I'll take our 50 gold. All right, and... Da, 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 da. <laughs> Holy shit. I used to use one of these. He doesn't even, like, need the mat. As soon as he sees it, he knows it. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, put it down. Put it down just to be sure, just in case it's cursed. Uh, but yeah, he put it down. Uh, he checks it. Yeah. Oh, man, this is an amulet of proof against detection. Uh, it helps you hide from, you know, scrying magic and magical, uh, that kind of thing. I used to use it to hide from my dad back before I realized he could break through those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. Huh. Yeah, you're basically hidden from divination magic while you wear it. I will wear it. If you are interested in selling it, we can offer... 300 gold. I'm going to hang on to it for now. Fair enough. It's a fun one. All right. Thank you, sir. Rock on. Uh, all right. How are you guys coming on deciding what you want to ask Gunther's dad for? Uh, I don't know if we decided on a boat. Yeah, boat sounds good. We need okay, one anyway. A nice, a nice, a nice boat, like a magic boat. Maybe a boat that can fly. Or, 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 maybe, uh, or maybe a boat that can steer itself so we don't immediately sink it. Yeah, an unsinkable boat that can steer itself. Not a Tesla boat. And a translation of a book to raise Brandeck. Well, now you're asking for two things, and that's cheating. What we want I'm not a good is person. We want a boat that can translate books. <laughs> An unsinkable <laughs> boat that steers itself. That can raise an egg. And grant wishes. And convert non-believers. Okay, this sounds pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> Not, no, no. You guys basically just have to tell Gunther when you're ready to go back. We're ready to go back. A boat full of hookers. <sighs> that can drive the boat and also raise the egg. And Grant wishes. And and, and and they all worship Tor. <coughs> Did someone say back? Oh, shit. Oof. Gunther exhales a big-ass cloud of smoke that uh, engulfs you all. And when it clears, you are back in the wizard chamber. And he is uh, creating a gust of wind with his hand, muttering, God fucking damn it, I tell him not to do this. <laughs> mm. Damn. So, Gunther's dad, here's what we'd like. We would like a boat large enough for all of us and our friends with enough room to escape Silas that will steer itself, be unsinkable, and will translate this book on how to raise the egg. <laughs> My God, should it raise the dead and suck your dick while it's at it? Can you do that? Are those options? <laughs> yeah. How how much research do you think you brought me? All of it. <laughs> yes, and it is quite interesting, but it's not Alrighty that then. interesting. Now then, the idea itself is not untenable. A boat is something I could provide, and I suppose I did say to make it special, so magic is not out of the question. Unsinkable, well, that's simply, that's like asking for an unbreakable object. My child, we live in a world with magic and gods. No such guarantees exist. Oh, I, mean, I got this thing that calls itself an immovable rod. It doesn't have to be truth in advertising, bro. Yeah, and technically my god can't get rid of me, even though he, he keeps trying. <laughs> that is a very true statement. Can we swap out the unsinkable for the dick-sucking option? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I could fashion for you a boat that, let's see, given your collective experience at sailing, yes, by necessity, 
was capable of steering, navigating, handling itself in the general sense. You would still, of course, have to protect it from bandits. If the wheel is seized, it is going to be turned. But That's fair. Otherwise, uh, I suppose that Wait, is let, absolutely doable. Let me ask a question about it steering itself. As it steers itself and, like, you know, does things the right way, is it possible that, like, you know, that it'll fool, it can fool somebody, say, like, you know, a not so bright monk into thinking he's actually running the boat when in reality he's not? I suppose if you can convince him that he is somehow turning the lines and shifting the sails and steering without touching, then. It's possible, but he would have to be an incredibly stupid monk. Yeah, this this isn't really a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> However, there is a slight issue. You are asking for more than you are offering. So, if well, you wish for the, the magic on the boat, you can put the uh, you can put the lick, you know, the uh, the bard under a gas. You will have to uh, forego the magical translations. If you want the translations, that's fine. You can have a normal boat that you yourselves will have to steer and pilot. Alternatively, I have one other option. Uh, I'm listening. Go on. I must confess, I am a bit curious about these interesting predicaments you have found yourselves in. So far, you uh, have... You're cu- you're curious, I'm flexible, a couple of drinks, we can get there, babe. <laughs> You've destroyed several of these things. I think I would like to send a, oh, shall we say, a representative with you to keep an eye in case more interesting discoveries that I might wish to take my hands on occur. Would this representative be... A culinary master and herbalist, perhaps? No, not in the slightest. In fact, he is uh, almost entirely useless in his current form. Uh, And the wizard Uh, will uh, snap, uh, and a small squat, uh, sort of like an imp and a goblin got smashed together. Uh, It's like maybe a foot tall, green with like flappy ears. Uh, he just kind of like waves at you guys. <laughs> Dobby, does it look evil and need to I die? I give it a sock. No. Uh, it doesn't look super happy. What is it? And who is it? What's its name? What's your name? Oh, uh, it was an uh, druid. Is I suppose at times that made some precarious business decisions, took out loans he couldn't afford. And now is ended up in my contract, shall we say. I find his normal form a bit loud. I guess stops and looks pointedly at Silas. <laughs> As if to say, you're next. Um, so did you do this to him? Well, I acquired his contract which Ah. legally permits me to hold him in whatever form I find most useful. I find this one the most silent and therefore the most (laughs) useful, but I would be willing to throw him along, Uh, perhaps even with an enchantment to go back to human every now and then if you should need his services. He's useful enough and, as a lingual specialist, should be able to begin deciphering that book of yours. It will be... Slow and tedious, but in exchange for passage and observation, he may offer insight into the raising of the egg. So this filthy little imp was is a dru- was is a former druid. Oh, he's still a druid. He just can't okay. use his powers. So, so can we call him Drew? <laughs> no, his name is Gordon. He's a person. Gordon. You weirdo. <laughs> so we're going to get a magic boat, and the man in the magic boat is going to be a cunning linguist. As a talented linguist, not cunning. Cunning people don't end up like this. It's all right. I, I got what I was there for. Yeah. Nobody no-sells a joke like Gunther's dad. Uh, this is very true. <laughs> it's all right. He was not the audience. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that sounds that sounds fair what, to me. What else will he do Wait, for us? This boat is big, right? Oh, absolutely nothing. He does not work for you. He works for me. Can't be clearer on that. 
Okay. But we'll he does have a sense of self-preservation and a hefty amount of debt to pay off. So I'm sure you could motivate him if needed. Ooh. We're going to be spending a lot of time with Toreg tracks. Yeah. Back to how big is this boat? And is there one soundproof chamber on the boat? With locks on the outside. Ah, right. The boat. I almost forgot. So, we have a deal, then. A Uh, magical boat, large uh, enough to house you and your friends, capable of sustaining itself upon the seas and following your direction. That's sucking dick. With... With a soundproof chamber with locks on the outside. Yes. No. (laughs) Oh, well, shit. Damn. With a airtight sphere floating 50 yards behind it on a rope? With a crow's nest. Done. You can put him in a crow's nest, yes. Put silence in the crow's nest. All right, he is going to um, clap his hands together and slowly pull them apart, and as he does, the glass figurine of a ship appears. Um, He kind of holds it in his hand, and he whispers a few things. You see it grow and shift and change, and you actually do see a crow's nest appear on the top um, as the form alters, and he kind of tweaks this and adds a rune here and, like, a thing there, and finally finishes and looks at it pretty happily. Smiles, and then kind of looks at you all. I am... Deeply, deeply terrified to ask this, but what would you like to name your ship? The SS Tor Boat. Oh, I was just thinking about it, but... Uh, Fair warning, if no one says anything, he's going with Silas. Tor Boat. (laughs) The Minnow. We still need to think, but that's better than Tor Boat. (laughs) Fuck you, fuck you, Gilgan. Bjorg? Ugh. Bjorg is going to pause, and he's going to think for a second, and he's going to look at his arm, and he's going to say, The Compass. Or, Boat Ag. No. Mm. All fine names. Which of these would you collectively like? And bear in mind, if you don't pick one, I'm going to name it the Shitberg. Torboat. <laughs> no, oh. not Torboat. No. All, all in favor? Okay, the motion passes. No. Um, yeah, the Minnow. Well, you or Joe are going to have to throw weight behind somebody's idea. So uh, I tra- uh, I'm liking the shitbird better than any of these. Uh, I'm actually kind of down with the shitbird, too. Shitbird, shitbird it is. The shitberg. All right. He, he kind of just stops and goes, wow, I... Yeah, you uh, kind of gave me back my own there. Well done. The shitberg <laughs> it is. And he, he swings a finger, and the words shitberg uh, appear. Uh, and then he closes his hand and looks out uh, of his tower and points out the window and says, well, Gentlemen, your boat awaits. Um, and if you all want to go run out and look, you will see the shitberg docked oh. and awaiting uh, its new captain's Slash travelers. And boy, that feels like a good cutoff point for this session. Y'all got a lot more done than I was expecting. Yes. I was sure you were just going to get high at Gunther's this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds... I'm down with Shitberg. Yeah, it's it's a fitting name for y'all's magical ship. Um, but don't worry, listeners, we are not done as you know. Uh, this is only the ending of the game section. We now transition to the Q&A, where we take your questions, sometimes at facebook.com slash authorsanddragons, but not until after we go to the Discord, where our wonderful patrons are waiting to cut the line. So, Rick, grab us a question and take us away. All right. The Sharta Maria. <laughs> ah, where were you when they were naming things, man? Uh, yeah, give me some time. Uh, the wizard, wizard oh. moments happen as they happen. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Our, uh, our friend Zade Angel, or x Angel, or however it's pronounced, asks, what is the shittiest job you've ever had? Okay, so, like, among the things I've done, I've done, uh, it's, it's not so much, like, a specific job as part of a job. Um, I would have to say, like, I've been a house siding guy, I've done, like, paper roots and stuff. Um, uh cleaning toilets at retail places that I worked. Ooh. I have seen 
so many creative ways for people to miss a toilet, which is like basic human 101. I have seen shit on the ceiling. I didn't hate the job itself so much. Like it was, there were rewarding parts to it, but man, being a mailman in Texas in summer is just, it's a fucking disaster from the minute you step into that heat. Yeah. I would, I would say kind of going the opposite of that. I spent an entire winter working at a car wash, which uh, the combination of the, a cold New Jersey winter uh, plus constantly being wet was not fun. That sounds like hell on earth. <laughs> I was a waiter at a fancy restaurant for like two days, and I couldn't hack it. That was the only job. I just I didn't even quit. I just I just quit, and I uh, didn't didn't come back. I, I'm not gonna count that though because. Yeah, I only lasted two days. Um, stocking groceries at the food line was fucking brutal. And uh, yeah, stocking jobs are stocking jobs suck. Yeah, I was you know late night hours, and I'm not a very physical person. And oh, that, but yeah, I, I did that through a whole summer, and that sucked. I uh, um, I did the bail during an interview. Bevan, like I like I was it was for a job uh, at a car dealership and like I got like 30 minutes in and I was my skin was crawling and oh, I was yeah. like yeah I'm gonna go get my uh, you know ID for the paperwork and I was just fucking gone I was yeah, like I, 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 I never want to interact with these human beings again yeah, I lasted a single day at, at one of the world's largest like electronics manufacturers I showed up there, and it was a complete bait and switch. The job I had been hired for was completely different than the job they gave me. I was reporting to somebody else, and I absolutely hated pretty much my entire team. <laughs> so the next day I walked in, they're like, oh, so what So what do you want to start with? I'm like, with this. And I handed them my badge and walked out. <laughs> nice. I lasted one night washing dishes at a seafood restaurant in rural South Carolina. I never went back. I was just like, uh, they called me and said, hey, uh, do you want your check? I said, can you mail it to me? Yeah, great. Then I'll never set foot in your restaurant again. I don't know. Joe, Joe cleaning shit, I think, kind of tops all of yeah, that. Yeah, that, 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 it, it, there was no uh, real beating that yeah. one. Retail toilets, man, it's uh, – it's a thing. Yeah, I mean, just 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 going into like a, a like a mall bathroom and seeing seeing the stuff oh. people do in those, it's like, do, 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 the what the fuck do you do at home? You know, you I just walk, walk in and you're like, why do people do this? That you're saying what? bathroom? Like, I had a friend who ran who worked in Walden Books and someone took a shit in the children's aisle and wiped with some of the books. What? What? The? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, like, as bad as I'm sure that was, like, let's not pretend it all happens in the toilet yeah. when you're in research. No, what the it fuck doesn't. is wrong with people? It's somebody, much. I did a con once where somebody took a shit in the dealer room. Like, con was open. I don't know if they were wearing a dress or a kilt or what, but there was a phantom poop just whoop, right in the middle of the aisle. Wow, yeah. that is, yeah. that's some bold shitting. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I can, I can, like, you know, like, yeah, I can forgive, like, you know, if you have a kid with you or so and they kind of have an accident because I've seen that happen. Yeah. But you know something? If you're an adult, yeah, what the fuck, dude? You know? Or like if it's a puddle, yeah. it's like, all right, this clearly wasn't planned. Someone just had something happen to them. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to get through their day. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's. Uh, I, I am mm. way too comfortable seeing random human shit from when I lived in Deep Ellum and the running game my friends and I would play was human or dog when you just see, oh. like, the bad <laughs> shit. You're like, ah, I don't know, man. And then, like, sometimes it would just be, like, a spray against the wall near the door, and you're like, oh, it's definitely human. That's horrible. <laughs> oh. oh, buying a kilt for Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> Plop. Guess which A and D author took this shit? <laughs> Plop. Some of those, uh, some of those lines are long, man. Uh, and then you can make everyone uh, see if you could like cut the line a little bit, and you just like carve it down slowly, drop a plop, and then you know, people run away. Line gets a little shorter. Yeah, no, no, or they, or they don't run away anymore. anymore. No, I, uh, I just, I'm, I'm just looking for excuses to use the phrase "drop a plop." <laughs> oh, okay. You have a kid. You have 
multiple kids. What other excuse do you need? Well, oh, that's a good point. I'm also drunk, so. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, kid, kids, kids, all bets are off. I mean, you know, I, I took one of my. We were at Great Adventure, one like an amusement park one time. Do you have to go? No. Do you have to go? No. Do you have to go? No. Go. No. We're standing in line, and, and we, we get online. So, suddenly, I'm like, oh, what is what is the sound of that water uh, dripping there? And I'm like, oh, god damn it. <laughs> My friend's son's shit in the sink. Wow. Yeah, he he's just like, to the sink. He just he'd just been potty trained too. Like he he had been going in the potty for like five days and then my friend got home and discovered that his son had just like apparently run into the bathroom, decided not to use the toilet that was right there, but climb up, squat over the sink and Hey, creative problem solving one oh one. Also, I the, think this was a question about jobs, so <laughs> <laughs> perhaps we should move on to the next one. <laughs> okay. Here's 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 one. If you could have any any pet, or well, actually, Aaron asks if you could have any pet. Price and reality are not concerns, and it was guaranteed to not eat you. What pet would you have? Lion, dragon. I mean, that feels like the gimme answer, but someone's got to say it. No, oh, I want a, I want a fucking lion. Fire breathing, magic casting, best friend. Yeah, I'm gonna go with dragon. I would like. Um, oh God, I mean, like, so obviously they need to be in nature, but um, I would love a serval. They're these little, like, spotted cats, and, and the thing that's great about them is when you feed them meat, they go like, <laughs> while, while they eat. And I could just sit there and listen to that shit forever. I'd get drunk, and I'd sit next to the serval and toss it steaks, and it would just go. <laughs> if you'll get drunk and toss me steaks, I'll make that noise. I say, I would love to take my, my pet Tyrannosaurus for walks on the leash, and then and then watch some of the neighbors even try to say something when it takes a shit on their lawn. <laughs> God, how big of a dump does a T-Rex take? And how many heads does it have in it? <laughs> hey, hey, you're, we are, your we are really shit. swinging back to shit. <laughs> your dinosaurs are <laughs> shitting on my yard. Oh, my Sorry, God. Man, that's my I'm, kid's head in it. <laughs> I'm just impressed. That. Normally, I'm the one who steers us there. I've had very little to eat today, and that one beer went real far. So I'm currently sitting in my chair spinning in a circle. <laughs> yeah, because you drink like real man beer, not the shit that me and Power Rick Hour and Bevan drink. <laughs> like, I, that's good. I'm gonna go with Green. talking weasel. <laughs> <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's we'd just be drunk and shouting abuse at passersby. It's the dream. I think it'd be gr- I think it'd be great if like you know you're lying there passed out the weasel is still shouting abuse and you just like keep w- getting waken up by people punching you in the face to get it to you. <laughs> Dude, I was asleep. You can clearly see the weasel was talking <laughs> shit. No, you motherfuckers. I want to say I, I, I know some people with parrots who probably pretty much can like get the same effect going. Well, uh, well I'm not talking about just mimicry. I'm talking about like, intelligently. Talking weasel, because reality wasn't an issue here. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking familiar. Taking your weasel to get your get his PhD. <laughs> yeah, and put that motherfucker through college. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all in for an adventure because Joe, it's time for you to pick a question from Facebook. Oh shit! <laughs> right. Okay, well, fuck yeah! All right, hold on, let me find the page. <laughs> we're all in this together now. <laughs> all right, hold on. We've been in this together for like 40 years, motherfucker. <laughs> it's the slowest. So, uh, all right. Um, our friend uh, Tony says, I have a question for the group. When creating a major character for a story, do you spend time developing their off-screen background, or do you just decide on their demeanor and start uh, at the start and roll with it? Uh, B. Demeanor and roll with it, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It depends on what comes to me first, because like, sometimes one of the things that inspires a character is like a backstory nugget. But usually I don't know what their history is until uh, part it of the is relevant. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, mine is changes from project to project. On like the lighter projects, a little more B. On projects where like, you know, I know in three books we have to reveal this, that, and the other about these characters. Um, I obviously kind of go in with a little more. If I have a lot of forward game plan for them, I also have to have a lot of backstory game plan to know where it's all coming from. So um, often see the pants demeanor, um, but there's also some occasions where it's just fucking really plotted out. I think that's Penis. good over you. <laughs> all right. Way so everyone too everyone's seen. Everyone's Fuck, I gave that. a real okay. answer. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 
Um, all right. Uh, okay, our friend Mark, fuck you, Mark, says, what is the most interesting fan interaction you've had? Who? John's probably got some good ones. <laughs> well, all right. So this isn't this wasn't my fan, but I was in, I was part of the interaction at the Charlotte Renaissance Festival a couple of years ago in November. So we're freezing our dicks off, and we've there's about eight or ten authors there, and we're sitting behind our little tables with books, and I happen to be sitting next to Faith Hunter. And this guy comes up, and he sees Faith's books. He sees all the Jane Yellow Rock books. He sees all of the Rogue Mage books. He sees the first, I think, two Nell books were out at that point. And he just starts going on and on about how he loves Faith Hunter, how she's his favorite author. And I said, oh, well, and Faith's just sitting there being quiet and a little amused. And I'm like, well, would you like to buy a book and she'll sign it for you? And he said, oh, no, no, I've got all of these. I was like, would you like to buy a book? And I pointed at her and Faith Hunter right here will sign it for you. And this guy <laughs> just turns beet red and runs away. <laughs> He did come back five minutes later and bought a book and had a nice conversation with Faith, but that was one of that was one of my favorites. Was this dude just? This is his favorite author. Oh, you're my favorite author. Holy shit! That happens sometimes. Like I, I've had people come to tables and like talk about Drew Hayes books and not realize I'm Drew Hayes and like you do the gentle lead in. And there was one, and thank God I had. Uh, my friend and editor Kisa uh, next to me as a witness because straight up five minutes of just doing like the more and more obvious I am Drew Hayes things and he did not get it to oh the minute God. he walked away. I like he walked away still not realizing and I think I had one point just said it and I, I guess he didn't hear or notice but I looked at Kisa and I'm like am I crazy? Could I have been more obvious? She's like no that was <laughs> that was insane. I bought a book at a bookseller at a con. And this isn't a guy behind a table just selling his books. This is a guy who's selling 20 or 30 authors books. And I'd been at conventions with him for two or three years and knew his name was Glenn. And I bought a copy of the collected tales of the black company. And cause I'd wanted to read it. And then I walked away and then I thought for a second and then I looked in the program for the convention and went back and got Glenn Cook to autograph his book that I just bought from him since I'd been doing conventions with him for three years at that <laughs> point. And I just thought he was this grumpy dude who sold books in the dealer room. That's Which apparently, you know, all, they can both be true. Mm. Oh, they were. Yeah. <laughs> um. I will say one of my favorite experiences slash most interesting slash, I don't know, just weird is um, one time I have been recognized outside of a convention space, like in my normal life. Someone has said, hey, are you Drew Hayes, the author? And that was fucking weird, like not in a bad way, but I'm also like, I'm really glad I'm the kind of, you know, tentatively barely famous where you're not easily recognizable. Because that is still a strange feeling. And it wasn't bad in any way. It was a perfectly nice person and a great interaction. But it was still just a jarring experience to be like, oh, shit, this can happen. I uh, happened one or two times, and it, it, it startles me every time. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. No, that I'm not that guy. Oh, yeah, I am. Shit. And you're not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's asking? You have to tell me yeah. if you're a cop. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, I have, yeah, I have yet to meet like you know somebody on the street, but apparently, like I, I'm having, I have these old six degrees of like you know of Rick Walteri thing going on. But it's my best, my best, like I think my one of my favorites is something that had nothing to do with me. I wasn't anywhere there, but my best friend from college, um, her husband got a new job, and apparently they invited the boss over, and they were talking about books and stuff. And he started bringing up, he's like, oh, and I'm reading this this guy. you got to check him out. His name is Rick Gualtieri. And she's like, yeah, I kind of know him. <laughs> I might have heard of him. Oh, yeah. This girl I went to college with, I made a, I commented on her Facebook page. And the immediate next comment was 
from a guy she worked with saying, wait a minute, you know John Hartness? I was like, <laughs> actually, I, I, I had that. Hap- I had that happen. Um, one of my, one of my, one of the guys from my D and D group, or my my other D and my real life D and D group, he posted something on Facebook, and I just replied. And a few seconds later, somebody else who was on it was like, "Wow, do you know you have the same ni- same name as uh, as this author?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> don't and nobody say. can pronounce mine either. I didn't. I didn't actually meet this person, but a uh, a high school friend of mine. Was I was hanging out by his neighborhood pool or something? I, I I might be getting some of the details wrong, but um, like a lifeguard or something there. He was just talking stuff, and uh, he recommended my books to my friend. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so I wound up sending the guy a signed copy, and uh, but yeah, that was weird. Your your name is Bob has actually come up in my in my D and D group a few times before I mentioned I before I mentioned like let them know that I knew you or so you know a couple of times a couple of the guys were like yeah I'm reading this like caverns and creatures book by this guy Robert Bevan yeah. <laughs> oh yeah uh, fuck you for not mentioning me earlier let's see here <laughs> um, I've had I've had two interactions that that like immediately pop up okay so so my first question is is it does it have to be our fans or can it just be like a weird experience at a con with uh, oh, you're the one who it can be whatever it is so you're the one who okay because like the number one the is number, this no, gonna the, get some is this somehow gonna get to shitting no it's not it's, oh. it's it has to do with the fact that like the first weird fan interaction when you react like when you bring that up my first thought is ferret jesus um, oh god <laughs> yeah uh, fair that i think yeah. Ferret, ferret yeah. Jesus counts. the second though was um i had uh I was walking around Emerald City Comic Con. I was literally just walking the floor. I was not wearing any particularly identifying clothing. And two uh, two young women come up to me and they're like, "You're Joe Brassi." I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "You know, we follow you. Like, you know, like we follow you on the internet." And I'm like, "Uh oh." <laughs> <laughs> Give us my first skin. Like, when someone's like, you know, when it does, like when someone is like, you know, I follow you on Twitter. I'm like, "Is that a?" Uh, 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 Good. <laughs> so yeah, and it, and it turned out like they were fans, but still, it's just like um, when when people say that they're like, I follow you from the internet. That, I hope that's a good thing. I generally assume that if it wasn't a good thing, they would have punched me first. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They might have come after me with knives. You're the last person on this podcast I would come after with a bladed weapon. Yeah, that that just feels like giving Joe yeah. the weapon he's going to use to yeah, skewer yeah. you. Yeah, that, yeah, no offense, Joe, but if we ever decide yeah. to take you out, it's going to be from a distance with, like, you know, oh. high explosives there. Guys, if you attack knives. Joe with a blade, you're just bringing him the murder weapon for <laughs> no, Like, you're saving like, him the trouble. No, like, the problem with knives, guys, is that, like, Knives scare me more than guns because, like, you usually don't even know that a knife is involved until you've been stabbed, and people don't tend to die of like one stab wound. If someone's coming after you with a knife, they're all like hyped up and they're like, "Ah, I'm gonna stab you 47 times," and they're on meth and they're jumping around and they're like all scrawny and weird and they have tuberculosis in their fingers. Sorry, I'm drunk. You've you heard Joe it here first. Lot. Knives lead to meth <laughs> <laughs> and tuberculosis <laughs> fingers. Yeah, and I think that is an excellent place to break for this week. We will be back <laughs> in two weeks with the new adventures of the shitberg on the high seas, and we'll see you next week with the side quests. Until then, bye. 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 Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons! Authors and Dragons! Sit down, Silas, and have some fucking poutine.